Hello, my name is Chris and this is Shanika McFly hey. and we are Americans living in Brazil. We are a family of seven, so we have five children and we're going to talk about the schooling here in Brazil. This is a question we get all the time. What do you guys do for school? How are your kids adjusting? How do you like school? All, all these school questions. So we are here to answer them today. Our kids have been homeschooling for the last two and a half, three years. This is our third year of homeschool. So we're gonna answer questions like, is it illegal to homeschool in Brazil? What are, what's our schedule? What do we use? What programs do we use? And about the social aspect of homeschooling as well. Before we jump into this homeschool discussion, we are going to have a quick little flashback from the very first school video we made. We had been living in Brazil for only four months. We were in Salvador, Bahia, and we made a first day of school video. Our kids were little, they were scared and nervous, and I want to do a check-in as to how they were compared to how they are now, how things are going now. So we're going to do a quick little update first. In Salvador, I remember feeling really nervous and scared because, you know, I didn't really know a lot about Portuguese then. How do you feel about school today? I'm scared and I'm excited. It was really helpful to have friends on the first day. And I made friends in our condominium in Salvador. And so I was really lucky that they came to school with me. They were able to show me around the school and it was, uh, it was a lot easier than just being on my own. Do you remember your first day? No. <laughs> Baby, I'm not even here. I'm a hallucination. So, Maísa. Pergunta pra Maísa. Então, não só pergunta, batam palmas pra ela, batam palmas. Do you remember your first day of school in yeah. Salvador? Yes. Tell me about how you were feeling. Scared. Scared? Scared, nervous, and excited at the same time. Well, I had a great time. We had a great time passing the ball around, saying who our names were, and I only knew two words, which, Oi, Maiza, you banheiro. That's more than three. <laughs> that's, three I mean, that's three. And you knew Sanwishi, too. Yeah, I knew. That was my first four. That was my first word, Sanwishi. Até o sanduíche, isso. So you guys were babies when we started in Salvador, meaning you were like four years old. So you were little, you were in preschool, so you didn't have the same first day of school experience, but you did go to two years of school in Salvador. So do you remember that time? Not that much. I know that we had like this break time and it was fun. And there's like this toy called Toto. It's like a soccer one. I think it's pretty, pretty boring, but I learn a lot. Like, time, I can times fractions. Hey, Cams. Okay, so I know you don't remember preschool in Salvador, so tell me about what you like about school here in Rio. It's really fun. I really, really, really like it. Really, what do you like about it? Because I don't think you think it's really fun. Yes, I do. I just, I like everything about it. Oh, okay, good. Now I'm doing actually pretty good. Every, every once in a while, I still struggle with Portuguese, but you know, that's, that's just a part of life. And I think it's just, Brazil is really fun. The schooling system is, it isn't the, it isn't the best, but it's still better than nothing. So, how are you doing now? How is school for you nowadays, four years later? Uh, good. It's, uh, boring. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like always. Um, yeah. I'm doing good. I'm almost done with the fourth grade. Almost going into fifth. Because, like, in homeschool, you can, like, do two grades in a year instead of just sticking to your whole grade. How do you feel about your Portuguese? It's good. It's improved. 
Maybe, maybe because uh, I do sports in Portuguese. I don't do sports in English, so yeah. That's still good. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so let's jump into it. Why did we decide to do homeschool? When we first decided that we were going to live in Rio de Janeiro, I would come down here often and I would look around for places for our business. And while I was doing that, I visited a bunch of schools here in Rio de Janeiro. And that's when we realized that moving to Rio de Janeiro and educating our children in the private schools here in Rio was going to be a huge expense to our family. A lot of people choose to do homeschool for religious reasons, but that, that wasn't us. We, were, we came here on a budget, we were starting a business, and we have five kids. And so we were looking at what was realistic to us and we were weighing all these options and we're like, boy, that's gonna be so hard to start over in a new city, build a business, and put all five of our kids in school. So we were looking at other options, and in the United States, it's really common to homeschool your kids. There's a lot of alternative education styles and online programs, and so that was already kind of a part of our upbringing and our experience in the States. And so I was like, well, let's look into that and see what we can do at home we decided we just needed to be creative. We wanted good education for our kids, but we couldn't afford it. So this is kind of how we created our system. I did a lot of research online. We needed an online school that was all encompassed 100% online. It needed to be a full curriculum, like a fully accredited school. It needed to have all the books and everything digitally online as well. I didn't wanna be shipping anything to Brazil. With all the different homeschool options, I mean, there are so many, I had to kind of sift through all these options. It boiled down to a program that we found called Acellus, and we love it. It's an American Science Academy, totally online, 100% accredited. It's zero through 12, so all grades. And we love this because it's all pre-recorded lessons, 100% of the tests, lessons, work is all online. There is a cost to it. It's $2,500 a child per year, but there's a really nice scholarship that everyone gets. If you commit to watching a weekly science video, then it, that cost drops down to $700. Per kid. This is in dollars, not it's a nice discount. It's a great discount, especially for five kids. Acellus is a highly recommended program used by over a million students in the States. Uh, private schools use its curriculum. It's amazing. The teachers are like actresses. They are really animated and teach really well. There's a lot of resources and helps. So we went with this program and then we took it a step further and we decided to hire a teacher because I'm not a teacher, we're not teachers. We are entrepreneurs, we're working, and I, quite frankly, did not wanna teach my children. It was healthier for us and for our children to hire a teacher to teach our children this curriculum on Acellus. Yeah, and much, 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 much more affordable to pay one teacher than to put five in private school. So how we did it was we put an ad on LinkedIn for a bilingual teacher. We gave like our requirements and the schedule and um, got 50 applicants. And so had no problem sifting through many qualified teachers. Ultimately, we went with one who has a lot of experience and a lot of patience, and we will introduce you to him now. Hi, Mr. Phil, please introduce yourself. Hi, everybody, hi there. I am Felipe Soares. I was born and raised here in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. You can call me Mr. Phil. Okay, that's my, let's say, my professional nickname, and I love it. I've been a teacher for um, 11 years, and I started at a public school here in a, in a project, so for community people and students. Then I took my teacher training course, and I went to the States. I took my ESL course at Brigham Young University, so I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I love wearing this, this tie. Wonderful. And then I came back to Brazil. Uh, I got my degree from Rio de Janeiro State University, UERJ. That was an amazing experience. Uh, I was also a tutor there, an English language tutor. I graduated in English language and literature, and I also started working at different language schools here. I also went to Romania to do my university exchange program, and now I'm here <laughs> as a teacher. Teaching for our family. It's a pleasure for me to be here with Americans again. Uh, that's, um, that's something I love doing, I love teaching, but I also love learning, which is also really important. What is your experience in working with our kids, specifically in this homeschool setting? They're amazing kids, 
they are very active, they are diligent. It's a little naughty sometimes, but it's part of life. We have to be naughty sometimes also. <laughs> we have to have fun. And I love it, just love it. I'm learning a lot from kids here. I think it's a little easier because we have smaller, uh, we have a smaller number of students, five kids here, and two in the morning and three in the afternoon. So uh, I think I can better manage things, you see. Some of them are like Portuguese, I feel that because of the language, because the language is, this language is hard. Even to me, for me as a, as a native speaker, and for most Brazilians, uh, it's considerably a hard language, but because of the grammar rules compared to English. The main tools you use are a workbook and then like speaking and exactly one-on-one -on -one exercises. Exactly, and also letting them talk, letting them give their, letting them give their own opinions. The beautiful thing about Acellus or homeschool is that we started homeschool in January of 2020. So that was three months before the pandemic. So our kids were doing uh, homeschooling without a problem. Once the pandemic hit, our kids with their school uninterrupted, no problems at all. It was seamless. It was seamless. And man, it was the one thing that was working out for us because business was a struggle. But we had our school system down and I did not have to do all the things that other moms were doing with the school in and out, back and forth, closed and open, and all the requirements. There was a lot of drama around that that I all was the other so families, happy. All the other families we know were going crazy, they pulling were, their hair out. They were, and we had our system in place. So this has really, really worked for us, and it was just really lucky that we had it in place before the pandemic. And then we also found that there were some things we just loved about it, so we've continued to do it. One of the things is the control we have over our education. The Acellus program allows you to choose the classes, choose the electives, and really create this educational program for your kids. A personalized program. When we were in Salvador, I was going to the school at least once a week to resolve resolve problems with the school administration. They didn't know how to handle Americans in their school. It was the first time they had Americans in their school. So every week I was there at the school spending a few hours talking with the principal, the vice principal, the directors, and it was, it was a hassle. And so we talk directly with the teacher every single day now, and he tells us what's working, what's not working. And so we have much more control in a very good way. Yeah. And then there's that added homeschool aspect of all the other things you get to show and teach your kids. We go on field trips on Mondays or Tuesdays. We can stay out of that weekend crowd and go to museums and visit places and have the time to do that from an educational standpoint. There is a lot of school bureaucracy that we get to completely avoid. There's a lot of testing and teacher conferences and peer pressure and drama at school. There's just the whole hassle of getting to school on time. And we have five kids. If one of them can't find one shoe, we're all screwed. It's like, always the shoes. <laughs> it's the shoes. Um, so it's just nice to wake up, eat breakfast, and go to school in peace. It really is incredible. So First of all, we're out of all this school drama, and then we have the, this amazing opportunity to travel midweek and off season to take our kids places they wouldn't be able to go. We have this other added educational opportunity to show our kids Brazil, and we found that to be so fun, so valuable, so meaningful, and just promoting those wonderful family moments that we're always doing. A lot of our videos are actually like field trips that we've gone on, and. We're enjoying Brazil and learning and showing our kids and making videos like it's perfect. One of the first questions people have when they find out we're homeschooling our kids is what do your kids do for friends? Like how are they social? What about that social aspect of school? That is a very important question and if you do decide to do homeschool you do have to put in that extra effort to be social. For me that's not a problem. I am a very 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 social person. I also love to organize a lot of groups and activities but we have a lot of things going on in our life that allow for many social situations. So number one is church. Every Sunday we go to church. There's youth programs we make sure that we attend. Sports is a big thing. Our kids, all five kids are each in two sports each. Um, At least. Yeah, some of them more. So we make sure that they are active, um, that they're making friends, that they're going to sports, playing as a team and getting that in. Also, we have big jump. 
Um, we spend hours and hours there and our kids are used to making friends on the spot at Big Jump, having fun with them for an hour until the session's over and, you know, practicing social skills in that way, especially making new friends. That's an amazing skill to have. We've made a very special effort to make sure that we're making friends in the condominium. That was hard to do at first because of the pandemic. Um, but I ended up having some parties over here, inviting families on our street over and just constantly reaching out. It does take extra effort, but it's well worth it. So they've got friends in the condominium as well and the condominium activities. And then also we're a part of many international groups. And so I have a, a group that's called International Family Fun. So we're always doing activities with them. So we are very social. They definitely have social outlets. We promote that, we support it, we help kids have play dates, we encourage and support sports. So it is important, but we're definitely getting that in. It's not all rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> uh, we've had a lot of downsides to homeschool. A lot of people uh, that, that we know have given us uh, pushback saying that we can't do homeschool. It's not allowed here in Brazil. Other things that we've run into are that the kids, when we first started, were fighting a lot because they were together all the time. And so we've had to make lots of adjustments to make sure that they don't fight and that they're not, uh, that they don't hate each other. So those are the things that, some of the things that we've had to adjust. It's true. There's been a lot of mental health balancing, starting from the pandemic and being stuck at home and then being just totally together at homeschool has presented a challenge and certain kids started fighting more so with other kids. So we were separating, we were trying to figure out to how to split the schedules, have one kid studying with a teacher in the morning or the afternoon in different locations in the house. As a homeschool family, you do have to be flexible and be willing to make adjustments and really listen to the kids and what they need. Um, one of our kids is just super easy and loves to be alone and study alone. The other ki kids, want more social time or want one-on-one -on -one attention with the teacher and we've had to create schedules and times for that um, so that they can have extra help on the work that they're doing and so that they feel loved and supported even at home when they're sick of seeing each other. Another downfall or downside is the internet. Uh, you always have to find an internet connection that actually works, a reliable internet connection. We don't always have that here in Brazil. Uh, oftentimes the power goes out and we lose Wi-Fi. Before the pandemic, we lived in an apartment. And during that time, we had a home office where all the kids could go down and use this home office for, for school. And the, the internet was reliable and it was perfect. But then uh, during the pandemic, we moved out of that apartment, moved into a house and Finding space inside of the house was a difficulty. Finding a private space in the house where the kids are not interrupted was difficult. And then also we had to get a, a Wi-Fi repeater to make sure that all the, uh, that they had the internet connection that they needed. So we've made the adjustments, we've, we've made it work. And when the Wi-Fi is out, they study Portuguese with the teacher. Yeah. That's another thing our teacher does is he supports them through their online American program and teaches them Portuguese. And it's that's our go-to when the power goes out. <laughs> as far as space in the house, we had to figure out a balance between having all the kids at the table together so the teacher could help everyone stay focused or what eventually happens was they all spread out and they were like in a corner, outside, on the hammock, in their room. And on one hand, it was good to keep the kids separated so they weren't fighting. But then on the other hand, it was harder for the teacher to manage and control and really help and support each kid. And somebody needed something over here, another one over there, and it became really disorganized. So then again, we've had to regroup. This year we have a new schedule and it's the best yet so far. In the morning, eight to noon, our boys have school in a school room with the teacher so it's quiet it's focused um and they have four hours of school a day and they the girls have three hours they have four hours because they're in middle school so they have a lot of extra work they need a lot of extra help um and that works really well so the middle schoolers are together they don't have their younger sisters making noises and 
and bugging them. Then we break for lunch, we eat together, we eat with the teacher, and then after lunch from one to four, the three girls have school um, separately in the schoolroom. And that has really, really cut the fighting in half. Um, it's a central place where we can keep all the tablets, notebooks, Portuguese books, pencils, supplies, because that was the other problem is like supplies are all over the house, no one could find chargers, tablets were dead when we needed them. Now that we've got a schoolroom, everything stays in there, plugged in, they've got a desk and a designated space. So that's really helped with organization and just peace at school. And for now, it's working. Yeah, it's working really well. Hello, my name is Professor Lexi. Hello, my name is Cambry. Professor Cambry. No, my name is Cambry Lexi. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, when you walk into the hallway, you can see the classrooms over that. And then it says, prepare to learn, be positive, try your best, believe yourself, be respectful of others, try new things, Always be kind, ask questions, be honest, and the best of all, work hard and have fun. Have fun is the best. So, as you can see, I can see a big, huge map. And right now, we are right and there. there. Oh, where are we? Right there. And, um, where's Rio de Janeiro? I'm a teacher. I should... Yeah, you're supposed to know. Where's Rio de Janeiro? You're so, almost there. You're almost there. No, no, no. That's okay, Salvador. Okay. Oh, yeah. there we, we are. We used to live there, but uh -huh. then we flew like two hours to get here. And now we live there. Okay. So we have computers. Yeah, we have laptops. And we have pencils. Yeah, we got our supplies. And, and YouTube. And the broken nose. This is my Portuguese book. Oh. I mean, it's great, but I didn't finish it yet. So they have Portuguese workbooks and notebooks for taking notes. But then, um, sometimes when I'm on science, I just look on this and that. The days of this, the week and the, the days, days of the week, of the week and the and the days sometimes for birthdays maybe. Wait, I learned something in science about the planets. There's a really easy way to memorize the names of it because the first letter of each one is my very excellent mother just served us nachos. <laughs> My very excellent mother just served us nachos. We're leaving this earth more stupid or something. Wow. I finished this. I finished this. I finished this. And one day, I finished this not even close to break time. Wow. I know. This is like the easiest book. Good girl. So tell me some things you like and don't like about homeschool. So I like that I, about school, that I have these subjects, math, language arts, uh, social studies, social and emotional. My favorite subject is social and emotional because it teaches you how to be kind, to be honest, and to be like, grateful. I like about homeschool that it's really flexible and usually I'm the type of person and that likes to sleep, sleep in. in. So that's a great thing. I like how like I don't have a bunch of kids in my class and I just have me and the teacher. And so because our homeschool is super flexible, I can um, start at nine o'clock instead of eight and do school at night also, like an hour at night so that I can do school early in the morning. So what I like about it is I have a nice teacher and he helps me learn really fast and and I love school so much. You, there's not as many distractions in because like in usually in physical school like you, there's a lot of distractions because when the, whenever the teacher leaves, there's so much noise in the room. Even though, even if the teacher's just right outside the door, 
And then I also really like that we can do school at our own pace. Tell me some things you don't like about school. Mm. You like everything about school? Yeah, just everything about school. Okay. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I don't really know the questions and I just get frustrated. I'm mad. Sometimes when it's flexible, it's also bad because that means that if you didn't finish your school, you, you like you're all you're always at home, and so so then you sometimes you might be doing school all day. I like asking the teachers questions, but my teachers are on a video and they just make they just have a video and they're not actually like talking to me in person. So I would like to like actually, but the teacher helps me and I can ask them questions too. But like I would like to have my own teacher instead of sharing a teacher with my sisters and brothers. And well, I like school, but I would really prefer to be in an actual school because I can make friends easier. And I think I could see my friends in school that I have on my street. Cause there's a girl on my street that we would be in the same class if I went to her school. I don't really like that, you know, there's... Um, I don't really like that... <laughs> you can't think of anything you don't like about homeschool? Uh, not really, no. You know, I think out of all the kids, you're the one who flourishes the most in homeschool because you really benefit from going your own pace and you like to study alone and like in your room or down here and you work really, really well independently. So homeschool works like really good for you. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's been pretty helpful. Okay, so the big question, is homeschooling illegal in Brazil? So in 2018, the Supreme Court ruled that all children should be enrolled in regular school. What does regular school mean? There's some gray area there. Um, regular school for us means that our kids are enrolled in an American program attending online. Um, what that means for Brazilians living here is that there's not legislation that regulates homeschool. So it's not that it's illegal, um, but there's just no regulation for it. So and there's no infrastructure for yeah. the homeschool. So it's not supported in Brazil, but it's not illegal. Um, there are thousands and thousands of homeschooling Brazilian families here that I've met personally. There's a really cool Christian homeschool here called Classical Conversations. And this program is really unique because they actually provide training to parents to homeschool their kids. And it's based uh, in Christianity as well. So a lot of churches support that. So I was reaching out to other homeschool moms. I found that there are a few chapters in Rio and one in Baja da Chijuca where we live and uh, went to this like underground church basement meeting with all these families who are just passionate about doing the best for their kids and homeschooling them in a more affordable way and with standards that they want to give their children. So our families out in Brazil homeschooling? Absolutely, absolutely, and very passionate about it. This was with or without that legislation. For us, I feel like as foreigners, um, educating our children in an American school online, I think kind of falls into that gray area. But the thing that is so important and the reason why we chose this school, one of the reasons why we chose Acelas is because they provide official transcripts. And that's really all you need. Um, we didn't know, we still don't always know whether we're coming or going, we wanna stay in Brazil, but sometimes we wanna go back home and no matter what, we need official transcripts showing the work and the progress that our kids are making because maybe next year we'll put them in normal school or maybe we won't. Hopefully we won't, because um, this is working out really great for us. Um, but you get official transcripts. It's official. This the system in Brazil, I think, will eventually get there, especially because of the pandemic. Yeah, it's because homeschool is becoming, or uh, let me say, school online is becoming more acceptable because of what all the schools had to adjust for because of the pandemic. Yeah. So there's new legislation coming. We've heard that Bolsonaro is in support of homeschool. There hasn't been any other updates since 2018. It's still as it stands, but um, I heard good things are coming. So keeping our fingers crossed. So I am here if you guys have any questions at all, if there's anything I didn't answer, if you have more questions, if you want to learn more about how we do things, what we've done, what works for us, I'm so happy to answer your questions. Please leave them in the comments below. Um, in the description below, you'll find the link to our homeschool and some other information about what we've done. I was thinking about doing another video about international schools in Rio. We have some experience with um, doing some 
spending some time at, on school campus, observing classrooms, getting prices. So uh, if you guys are interested in another school video about comparing international schools in Rio and what they offer and bilingual services and prices and stuff, let me know in the comments and maybe I can make that for you if there's enough interest. But thank you for watching our video. I hope this helps. Please let me know if you have any questions and we'll see you next time.